professional football player and popular YouTuber D. Strowing unfortunately suffered a potentially season ending injury on this play here. And we since have found out he actually ended up breaking his neck. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what exactly could have happened. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. My goal in this channel is to help teach you more about the medical side of the sports world. So we got the unfortunate news that destroying, if anybody's watching sports YouTube, you probably know about this guy. Really cool to see him finally get a shot as a professional football player. But in just his second game, he was trying to make this tackle. And as he appropriately admitted here with the importance of tackling safety and tackling awareness, suffered an injury and we found out today with an Instagram post he shared that this is a actually multiple fractures of his cervical spine. So what exactly caused this? Well, when we talk about proper tackling form, we really don't want the head to be lowered. When you lower the head, you straighten the natural curvature of the spine and you cause more force to be imparted through those vertebral bodies if you have some sort of axial impact. And so this is why we teach heads up tackling because your head stays up. You maintain that natural curvature in your neck so that if an impact does come in, your spine is able to give a little bit and absorb some of that impact. But as he comes in here to make this hit, we see him unfortunately lower his head down that straightens his cervical spine and then you get this axial load where an impact comes from the top of his head straight down through the spine with a little bit of excessive lateral bending where the head was bent off towards his left shoulder. So that's what he's talking about here with proper tackling form and unfortunately what led to what we now know of as cervical fractures. If you look at our biodigital anatomy tool here from the side on, this is gonna be the cervical spine and there's that natural slight curvature that I'm referencing. Whenever somebody gets something called spear tackle or spine, they get straightening of that cervical spine and it can actually be a contraindication in continuing to play contact sports like football. So when you bend the head forward, you swing this forward and you go towards now this straight cervical spine. And when you have an axial load of force that comes in from the top, like making this tackling position, you get increased force transmitted into the vertebral bodies. The neck is not able to absorb all that impact and you have a higher risk of injuries, like in this case, a fracture. <clears throat> now the specific anatomy and landmarks here. So the cervical vertebrae have some different shapes. C1 is right here highlighted. That's actually referred to as the atlas. <clears throat> In Greek mythology, of course, Atlas held the world on his head. And so the Atlas C1 supports the skull. C2 is called the axis. The axis has this little protuberance here of bone called the dens. And then as we work our way down the rest of the cervical spine, C3, C4, C5, 6, 7, and so on until we get to the thoracic spine. On the back side or the posterior side of these vertebral bodies, we have the spinous process. That's this guy right here. And then we have the little joints where one cervical vertebrae articulates with the other called the facet joint sitting right here. Now higher up in these cervical bodies, we'll see these little foramen, this little hole kind of right here. That's actually where an artery runs up from the heart up to the head to supply some blood to the brain. So when you have a fracture, there's been obviously a break in the bone, but he's very fortunate that there wasn't something like a spinal cord injury that we're aware of or any sort of injury to that vertebral artery coming up through these little holes because those can also occur when you have a fracture. We don't know exactly what this fracture is, but some named fractures of the cervical spine, about a third or so most often happen to either C1 or C2. A fracture of C1, there's a specific type called a Jefferson fracture where you get a little break kind of right here through these areas of that ring. If we look top down, generally these C1 fractures have a lower chance of a spinal cord injury because there's a lot of space for the spinal cord to move even if there's a bone piece in there. And then you can get a hangman's fracture which is a fracture through this dens here of that C2. A clay shoveler's fracture is a fracture of the spinous process, typically down at C6 or C7, where there's just been excessive hyperextension and you get a crack through that spinous process. But then you can also get a compression fracture of more the vertebral body here in the front. So a lot of different types of fracture patterns depending on where it's at in the spine, but thankfully it doesn't appear to be in this case at least highly associated with any sort of a significant spinal cord injury or a blood vessel injury. In terms of treatment so far, we just know that he's immobilized in this cervical collar. The purpose of the cervical collar is to just keep the spine completely immobilized. You're trying to allow those fracture pieces to fuse, to heal back together, and so you need to minimize motion. The fact that he's just in a cervical collar and not something more rigid like a halo where there's actually pins in the forehead to be even more restrictive is optimistic to see. This is a lower degree of immobilization than sometimes will be necessary with a cervical spine fracture. So this is at least a good prognostic sign. We haven't heard anything about needing surgery, so hopefully he doesn't need any surgery for this. 
And if everything heals up okay, in no way should this necessarily end his football career, right? He's not typically delivering hits. He's not taking a lot of tackles. He's a kicker. Assuming everything heals up okay and there's no spinal cord injury or nerve injury, shouldn't have any impact long-term on his professional football career. So please remember, as Destroying was saying, to have good proper tackling form, heads up tackling, keep that head up. Do not lower your head to be a weapon and hit somebody because you run the risk of straightening that cervical spine curve and having a higher chance of significant spinal cord or vertebral injuries. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.